Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. Last time we made our way into the prehistoric past to find the Dreamstone to fix the Mazmoon, but whenever we got here we did find the stone, only to have our gate key stolen by Kino, so whenever we confronted him, he told us that the Reptite stole it from him. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, so we're chasing after the Reptites, and we've made our way pretty much to the boss room here with Isla, our new party member. And, um, yeah, she's got some pretty nice attacks. She's working on Rock Throw, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but the nice thing about Isla is that she is the strongest party member that we have, with, like, 20 more attack power than Chrono and Robo. It's really nice. However, up ahead, we do have a boss, and afterwards, Isla will be leaving us, so whatever accessory you put on her will be gone um, for quite a little bit of time. Right now she has the Power Scarf, which raises her power by four, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her the Power Glove, only raising her power by two. That way, if I want to use the Power Scarf, I can. If you really want all those good accessories, just give her something useless, like the Sight Scope, or, you know, maybe the Third Eye, or something like that. Um, whatever you give her, again, will be gone. As far as your other party members, you want Karna with the Speed Belt for as much speed as humanly possible, Robo with the bandana for an extra boost of speed as well. And Chrono is going to be casting magic throughout the fight, so I'm going to give him the red katana rather than the flint edge, just to give him a little bit more magical ability. If you want to, you can give him the magic scarf for some extra magical attack power, but I think that the speed is just a tad bit more important. So anyway, with all that being said, let's go beat some bitches up and get our gate key back. You must have the key. Oh. Yeah, we're really different, especially Robo there. Tell him about the key? Hell no, you stole it from us. Uh-oh. Yikes. Whoa. Oh, good God. We have yet another dinosaur. Whoa, he has really nice arms. Damn. <laughs> oh, Nisbel, how I hate to destroy you. But remember, as far as dinosaurs are concerned, you lower their defensive power with um, lightning. So, yeah, that's basically how this is going to go. Go ahead and decrease his defense power, and then wail on him with your strongest attacks. Robo is going to be robo-tackling over and over and over again, whereas Chrono and Isla are going to be teaming up with a dual tech, the mighty Volt Bite. This thing is ridiculous, dealing tons of damage. Essentially, Chrono casts lightning on Isla, and then she, I don't know, releases the energy for like 700 damage. It is so good. So within one round of attacking between the Volt Bite and the Robo Tackle, we'll be dealing roughly a thousand damage to him. Here's the deal with Nisbel, though. Um, after a while, like two or so rounds, he's going to release all of his stored up electrical energy, dealing a huge amount of damage to the rest of your party. Yeah. Whoa, it's like 200 damage. It's kind of ridiculous here. If you're worried about it, oh, shoot. Yeah, that's right. I need to um, cast another lightning on him to lower his defense, because as you saw, Robo went from dealing 300-something damage to dealing, like, 10 damage. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. Okay, um, let's see, another Volt Bite, another Robo Tackle. Okay. If you're at lower levels than me, or if you're just worried about it, you might want to bring in someone like Marl, and then do an Aura Whirl or something like that. Or if you have Robo's Heal Beam, use that to cure everybody up. But we should be able to kill Nisbel before he's able to release his next round of electric energy. If he does release the next round of energy, we're dead. But we got him first. So yeah, he has 4,200 HP, and you should be able to kill him easily enough before he kills you. That's basically the name of the game. Kill him before he gets you. If you have the Charm ability from Isla, which I don't, and you'd really have to be grinding in order to get that, um, you would be able to Charm a third eye from him. But, yeah, not really a big deal. Oh, thanks. Uh-oh. Doinks. Are these are numbers? I don't think so. Something tells me the mammals will rule the world, not the reptites. 
Isla's still a little bit drunk, and she just vomited all over the place. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. So if you talk to them again, they'll just say the exact same thing as they just said there. So at this point, what we need to do is go to Melchior's hut in 1000 AD. So rather than backtrack, I'm just going to meet you there. I've made my way here. Hey there. Oh, great. Um, we're kind of special people. <laughs> but the real question is, how on earth does he know about the Mazamoon and the Dreamstone? If you brought Luca with you, Luca would help too, and she would just kind of stand there. Oh. Okay. You know, there's not really much that you can do here to help. You literally just kind of stand around. So, yeah, not really much going on here, except the awesome music, and I'll just like to listen to that. Great, that was really quicker than I thought it would be. Shouldn't we have both pieces of the Mazamoon? Like there was the broken sword and the hilt? Like, don't we need both pieces? Oh well. Oh, it's no problem. I mean, that took a lot of work. Wow. Things magnificent, yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else to say? Either save or destroy life. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Melchior knows what he's talking about there, so we'll just, uh, think of that as a little bit of foreshadowing. Anyway, now we're going to 600 AD in the Cursed Woods, and I will just, um, Meet you there. Here I am in Frog's house. Hey there. Oh, he's so excited. He just jumps around. He's so cute. I love Frog. Well, what's the matter? Oh, okay. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, here we get some flashbacks and some dream sequences. Frog's dreams. Oh, the hero medal from the Frog King? The mythical sword must be the Mazamoon. Oh. Okay. Whatever happened to Cyrus? Lean was talking about Cyrus before. Is Frog Cyrus? Hmm. Huh. Again, the Knights of the Square Table. It's so ridiculous. I love it. Wasn't there an SNES game called the Knights of the Round Table, but it had, like, star football players be, like, Lancelot and all that kind of stuff? I kind of recall something like that, but I never actually played it. I remember seeing it in, like, Nintendo Power, but never actually played it. Who's this kid? Glenn? So we have Cyrus and Glenn. Hmm... What's going on here? Whoa! That looks like Guardia Woods. Where are we at now? Oh, this looks like the bottom right-hand corner of Guardia Woods, but okay. The Badge of Courage? I thought it was the Hero Medal. Yeah, get him! Cool! Now it's a medal? I thought it was a badge of courage. Now it's the hero medal? Okay. Man, make up your mind. And who was that random chick with them? What's going on now? Oh, the Mazamoon! <gasps> it's Ozzy. And someone else.
Oh god, is Glenn dying? Oh no. Uh-oh. That's Magus. Holy crap. Get him! Whoa! Now they're up in the Denodora Mountains. This must be where the Mazamoon was held. How it got broken. Whoa! Oh shit! Oh god, poor Cyrus! Magus just like immolated him. What the hell? No, run for your life! That's what Cyrus told you to do! Oh. Oh no. Ah! Oh shit. So Magus killed Cyrus and then turned Glenn into a frog? And then they just left the Mazamoon in the Denodora Mountains broken and destroyed. Oh god. Yeah, in more ways than one. And the love of your life, Cyrus, died! Oh, his poor little boyfriend. I feel bad for poor little frog. He's such a cute little froggy. Yeah. We knowest of his power, don't worry, frog. Yeah, we've got to. Because remember, Lavos is, or I'm sorry, Magus is the one who summoned Lavos. That's why we're trying to get rid of him. Um, at this point, let's bring in, eh, yeah, eh, why not? We're bringing Luca. Actually, well, hmm. Yeah, we're bringing Luca. Whatever. It really, I mean, you can always change your party members whenever the hell you want to, but yeah. Now we have Frog in our party, and right now he is Slurp and Slurp Cut. Um, let's go ahead and look at his, um, wait. Urgh! Yeah, I'm hitting wrong buttons again. He still has all this crap-ass iron equipment. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll give him the rock equipment, the ruby vest, and down here. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, it ups the critical hit rate of the Mazamoon. So yeah, we'll go ahead and stick that on him. But we can't equip the Mazamoon yet. He also got um, a couple extra levels too, so that's pretty nice. Make our way through here. Still no new. Man, I'm hoping to show off the new, but that doesn't seem to be happening um, today. That sucks. Oh, well. So we heard that the Magic Mountains or the Magic Cave is the way to get to Magus's lair. So let's see about getting in there. Oh, what now? I guess we get another little piece of uh, history here. Oh, again in the Guardia Forest. Looks like, yeah, it looks like some kids were um, tormenting poor Glenn there and Cyrus came and saved the day. Oh. This kind of reminds me of scene in Lufia too with uh, Tia. T is talking to a- he's a marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, T is talking to a little girl about crying and everything. It's a, it's a really sweet scene if you haven't seen that. A couple years go by. Here's Cyrus and Glenn again. Oh, this is before he became a knight. Yeah. You, yeah, that would be so good. You guys can be together forever. Just like you want. Oh, poor Glenn. I love this bridge. I love this scene. I just, uh, just, it's really touching to me. I actually used this footage. I think it was in the top ten, or the, the Seven Deadly Sins video. I'm pretty sure I used that footage there for it. Yeah, and here you get to see that Magus turned Glenn into Frog. I remember as a kid, I was really confused about this scene. I couldn't, I couldn't keep it together, and I went through the entire game thinking that Cyrus was Frog. 
because I was a dumb kid. <laughs> but it's pretty explicit. Yeah, it's Glenn that got turned into the frog, but yeah. And then there's the Hero Medal, which they called the Badge of Courage before, but... Okay. Handeth over the Mazamoon. Yeah, as you noticed before, you couldn't actually equip the Mazamoon on Frog. You have to go through this scene in order to equip it. Even here, whenever he explicitly stated that his name was Glenn, I still thought that he was Cyrus. <laughs> I was, I was such a dumb kid. Love this scene. God, there's so many good scenes in this game. And this is the SNES version of a cutscene. This would be turned into a, um, like an FMV in the PlayStation version. But this is all we got in the SNES gaze, and you know what? We liked it! I still like it. I think it's great. But hey! Bust down those fountains. And in we go. Look at all these, like, rats and bats and everything. They're, like, stunned. They're like, oh my god, I can't believe that something came in here. It's, uh... uh oh, can I hit all of them? Hey, I can with a nice cyclone there. Awesome. Oh, that was, like, no damage against those guys. Man. Thankfully, we do have Luca with us. Maybe she can do something about them. Let's see what we got going on here. I got that napalm ability. Oh, can I get them both with a... Fl no, okay. We'll try our napalm. Why not? It's new. And it looks like lightning is definitely the way to go against these guys. Um, they seem to have a lot of physical defense. But unfortunately, Frog doesn't have any magic right now. Yeah, zap them. Bam! Woohoo! Yeah, this is kind of a throwback to Final Fantasy III with that little magic scene. So yeah, travel to the end of time, and Frog will learn to use magic as well. And there seems to be some sort of bat following us here. So, next time on Let's Play uh, Chrono Trigger, we're going to be going to the end of time, getting some magic, and headed off to Magus's castle. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.